Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Whitney and before you guys watch this video, I just wanted to come in here and give you a little bit of a disclaimer. So while I'm sitting here editing the video, I just wanted to first say that I do apologize for the audio. When I was visiting my family, I didn't bring my camera. So I only had my phone and I didn't realize that my audio was whack until afterwards. So one, I'm sorry for the audio. And two, I just wanted to come on here and tell you why I wanted to give you guys this video. So the purpose of this video is to basically tell you guys that, you know, people become lawyers, people become these, what do we want to call them? These elite or very hard opportunities or these jobs and they pay their dues right like not everybody has an awesome beginning not everybody has the highest score the highest LSAT whatever etc that you're trying to get into right not everybody has the highest score not everybody has the highest grades not everybody has what I'm trying to say right not everybody has the most best path to getting what they want and so today I wanted to present to you guys someone who didn't necessarily have the greatest path when they went to law school during law school and when they graduated they basically worked absolutely hard to be able to get the job that they wanted to be able to live in an environment and to live as comfortably i say comfortably like this because you know as successfully as i guess is what i'm trying to say they want to live as successfully as possible and basically i have someone here talking to you guys about her experience and how she paid her dues how she worked absolutely hard even though the odds were stacked against her so i hope you guys really enjoy this video i hope you guys ignore the audio and you know just continue <laughs> my channel it's your girl Whitney and today I have a special guest today I got my sister Rebecca go ahead and tell everybody your credentials and why we're here today all right well I am a newly admitted attorney I was admitted November 18 2019 so I'm fresh um yeah pretty much I got my BS in criminal justice and I went to law school at Hopkins University what year did you graduate from law school 2019 yeah. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so basically, in this video, we're hungry, we're gonna be eating, but also, I have, I don't wanna say I have connections, because I don't have connections, but my sister is an attorney, and y'all know that I'm trying to go to law school. And so, what better to get the best advice from, from an actual attorney? So, my sister graduated, and she wasn't the top of her class, however, she did her, she basically paid her dues, right? So after, it was about six months after she graduated, she not only passed the bar, but she had a job. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Is there anything wrong? Nothing? Okay. So first question, how would you describe your process getting into law school? Um, well, mine was definitely different because I didn't really, settle on the idea of law school until two years after undergrad. So once I finally made up my mind, I studied maybe not as um, much as I wanted to for the LSAT, but I just put in some time studying for the LSAT. I scored it about average, and I got into the majority of the schools that I applied to, and difference with undergrad for me and law school was that with law school I actually applied places that I wanted to go whereas undergrad I was like send me the free app mm -hmm. I'll go wherever I don't care this time I actually put a little more thought into my application process especially because I wasn't completely confident in my LSAT score so Are you comfortable telling people what your LSAT score If was? I remember, I don't, it was like 150, around that 150, 145 to 150, something like that. It was very average. So what was your um, undergraduate GPA? 3.1. Oh, so you guys were really low scores. 
Well, I'm not trying to be like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be like that, but yeah. like, they're like I had, 3. I, was, I was a B student. Mm. I was a B student. I wasn't, um, That's a festival. you know, and this is all because, again, I didn't focus on law school being the end game, although I kind of set myself up for the what if. I didn't, I didn't come off the gate saying, I'm going to law school no matter what. So that's why I kind of like, whatever. Anyway, I did that. And then I, when it was time for my application process, I kind of gave that more thought and I put more effort into making sure that whatever school I ended up at, I'd have the resources to have employment and do well, obviously. So, well, did you care about Any of the C14 or C20 schools? No. You just wanted to. Go, you just wanted to get in. So you basically number took one a chance. Was, yeah. Number one was I just wanted to get in because I know that wherever I'm at, as long as I put in my time, my effort, and I'm smart about, you know, using the resources, I'll be fine. So. Okay. And also, I knew that um, I didn't want to be. I didn't want to work in big law. So, I wasn't super concerned about going to top tier school. Did you know what you wanted to do from the beginning, and are you doing that now? Um, I think for some reason I thought I would be into um, the criminal justice system. And once I got to law school, I changed my mind. So I thought I would be maybe a defense attorney. Maybe even a prosecutor, although some of the best judges have done both, and I, my end game is to be a judge. But once I started getting experiences and taking classes, I knew that family law and matrimonial law was my thing. Wait, you um, you still want to be a judge? Or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my end game. You and I have like similar goals. You had an unorthodox beginning because you started at North Carolina, and then you went to New York. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your transfer, how you had to actually to a different school and still be in law school overall, because I know that the curriculum was probably different. Because you went from an HBCU to a PWI. So, um, yeah, I started off at North Carolina Central University School of Law which I really did enjoy my time there. I made some great friends, lifelong friends. I had really amazing faculty. My experience there was that they actually cared about their students. And you know, it's a smaller school, so they can be more hands-on. Faculty, staff, professors, everyone was really geared towards making sure that students did well. Um, but Literally, like two months into one all year, I got pregnant and had to transfer. Um, that was just the best decision for my family. And my biggest thing was making sure that I could finish school. And the only way to really do that was to be back home with a support system. So immediately after I found out I was pregnant, I pretty much, I mean, we had to talk. Um, my child father and I, and we figured out what was best, and then I got right to the application because transferring is just as, if not a little more, competitive. Oh, really? Yeah. Which I learned the hard way because that time around, I got rejected from four of the five schools that I applied to. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. So. I mean, part of it was that I didn't complete one of the applications, so it was like a default, you know, rejection. But for the most part, it was pretty competitive because a lot of people start off somewhere and then build their grades up kind of to make up for undergrad, get their experience or whatever, and then they transfer to where they really want to be. And for me, I'm trying to get into schools that people want to be there, and I'm just like, I don't necessarily want to leave, but this is what's best, so I'm trying to get a spot. So I just thought that I was able to get into Hofstra, but it was competitive. I transferred, I got into Hofstra, and had my son in June, and was back in class that August. Um, 
everyone was pretty was pretty um, willing to work with me mm-hmm. as far as you know early classes that I had to take and getting there on time and everything. Um, the faculty at Hofstra was really hands on as well. Um, partly because I was a transfer and also because they were just they were just very into getting you a placement because at the end of the day it looks good for them when you get placed. You know, every school has their, their faults and everything, but I think they did a good job with making sure I didn't fall through the class. So that was good. So which would you prefer going to an H B C or a B W Y? A P W Y. Show up. An H B C U. P W Y serves their purpose, but of course for people of color and especially those who are looking into professional schooling, I believe that you're gonna spend your whole career with different faces. Oh, that's true. And predominantly certain yeah. faces. But that's a good point. To have that schooling experience where you're not, you know, worried about being looked at as a token or looked at as a product of affirmative action or whatever. It feels good because you know that everyone, I mean, not everyone, because there's diversity in, in HBCUs as well, but for the most part, the whole fa- the faculty, the staff, the professors, everyone, they they look like you and they want you to do as well as they've done. I like that because that's like excellence. You're looking at the excellence that you want to be that's around you. Right, because at Central, I was being taught by judges, I was being taught by, um, really prestigious attorneys in the area who, you know, after a while, they're like, I am tired of litigating. I'm just going to teach. Mm-hmm. But they can do that. They have the, a wealth of knowledge. If you stay in the area, that's the good thing about when you pick a law school, you have to make sure that there's something that is going to carry over, whether it be I have connections because I'm staying in the area or I learned excellent um, legal writing skills, so I can take this wherever I go, something like that. For me, going to Central was um, preparing me to have connections in North Carolina because I did want to live in North Carolina at that point. Yeah, after like a couple of months here, I was like, I'm staying. So what was your first year like in law school? What were your courses? How do you feel about the whole experience in general? <laughs> why why like are you asking me to relive trauma? <laughs> it was really trauma? It was a mess. Everything they tell you about law school is true. It's a shit show. It's a shit show. Is it because it's unorganized? Like, mm-hmm. why? It's not that. It's just like, no matter where you go, law school is stressful. Oh, like, yeah. it's a different kind of stress. And I used to look at people who. And this is no shade to people who go and do like masters and things like that. But when they would post their, their grades and they'd have like all A's and like 4.6's and stuff, I'm like, and how rigorous is your program? Yeah. And there are people in law school who got about all A's as well. But most of us are like, we're learning a completely new way of comprehending what we're reading and analyzing especially people like me who i didn't completely prepare myself for law school because i really wasn't sure that's where i was going to end up so you weren't afraid of like wasting money the first year no because i don't (laughs) that's one thing about me i'm in school because i'm getting in i'm getting my grades and i'm getting my diploma i'm not going to school to take some time out yeah. and that's how shady people who do those things but, but once, it's but for me thing. personally once i get in i need yeah. to get out that's a good point. and things happen obviously but if i i wouldn't be able to live it down like with myself no one else would put pressure on me for that kind of thing and everyone's always told me especially with having my child that um one l year i was always told like it's okay to take a break you don't have to go all the way through have us here don't worry about it i'm just not built that way but i wasn't worried about that i was i i mean contracts and having the little jokes 
didn't even, I think this is the ACS too, it's a whole, it's a whole network. Um, Animal care. No! <laughs> I think it's administration for children's services. Um, yeah, that, they have things like that, they have fairs, they have on-campus interviews, and that's all to make sure that one else can get that, and it's for everybody obviously, mm -hmm. but the, the one else are specifically pushed into it because they're new to the environment, so they're trying to get them to get their um, internships because it's really, really competitive and hard to get. And what I saw a lot of at Central was a lot of my friends and people in my section got their um, internships. So I was like, wow, I wish I could get one, but at least I knew the opportunities were there. And once I went and transferred to um, Pasta, they set me up with um, one of the advisors who's in charge of pro bono internships and opportunities and externships. So I was able to do an externship during my tour year and then um, I had already gotten myself a tour, like a summer internship um, in Judge Gretchen Walsh's chambers uh, for Westchester County Public Court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, that was funny because that was the one that I was sitting in the car mm -hmm. and I was calling everybody was like, guys, I'm nervous, I don't want to go yeah. inside. <laughs> but yeah, I did that. So you can take it upon yourself to get um, your summer internship or you can go to the school. Um, and my advice on that is to, unless you know exactly what you want to do, do whatever you can because that's how you weed out what you're good at, what you're like, eh, I might be good at it, but I don't want to do it. Isn't that, I always thought that that would kind of be like a waste of time. Because wouldn't you want to do what you like? Well, but I'm saying if you don't really know what you want to do. If you don't know what you want to do and you have some interest, yes, they discourage you like bouncing around or whatever because it's just like when um, employers look at your, your resume and they're like, why did you really spend yeah. you know? But at the same time, you're never going to know what you want to do until you try it. And a good chunk of law school is core classes that I mean, you need them, but you're also like, I wish I could take a class regarding family law or security and um, maybe even like marine law or whatever they call it, naval law, I don't know. I guess I do need a law out there. Of course, you need a law for everything, but it's just, I'm not introverted. Mm -hmm, that doesn't sound interesting. So basically what we can say is that you had an unconventional law school experience, but no, you can still eat if you want to, it's cool. But you finished in three years' time, mm -hmm. and you got a job in six months. Would you say that that's doable for everyone? Yes. Most of the people I know had jobs secured from before, so I felt very late to the game, but it's definitely doable. I know so many people who have even had kids, had whole families, and they graduated law school, they have their, their job, their career, they were set up pass the bar on the first try just like me. It's definitely doable. So if you are planning to go to law school and you're worrying about you know your score, your LSAT score, your GPA, whatever, don't let that discourage you. There is a school out there for everyone. There is a field out there for everyone. And just know that you can do it. And just because you're not like in big law or anything like that doesn't mean you're not gonna make money. Because my sister makes money. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> but she's good, exactly. So, is there anything else that you would want to say that you think people should know before going into law school? Um, make sure you have a very strong support system. I would tell everybody that um, you get broken off into sections when you get to law school, and I would say that, especially if you're going out of state, have your core group. Obviously, don't make it clickish or whatever. But you have your your people that you can go to and just like they'll see you when you're studying and know when you need to take a break or they can give you comedic relief or if you need to cry or whatever you just need to take a break and go eat. Have those people with you just in your support system because, frankly speaking, your family and your friends from back home are not gonna get it, especially not when I'm in. And it's gonna be tough trying to 
balance all of that without people who know what you're going through. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Do you think your friendships or anything like that have wavered because you were in law school? No. Uh, no. Because most, a lot of people that I went to school with have gone into, like, they've gotten higher education, they've gotten postgraduate degrees, so they've, um, and not just, like, in random things, like, cooking making or something, yeah. like, very rigorous programs, so they understand, and they understand the weight and the pressure of something like the bar exam at the end, so they got it. I don't know, for me, I feel like, this is kind of like a sidebar, but for me, I felt like my degree after undergrad was easier. Like, I felt like grad school, not grad school, undergrad was harder than grad school. Well, that's, not the truth. that's what I was saying earlier. So many people yeah. with masters, oh, I did it. I'm not saying your degree was in yoga or whatever. No, but, but like, a lot of them, their programs are not as tough. Mm-hmm. They can be, because those are tougher, or really tougher programs. Yeah, she, I remember you saying something. But, Law school is definitely a different beast, and I think the only people who can really, 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 really are, are people med learning. school people oh. or nursing school. Okay. But anyway. That's interesting. I think that's all the questions I have for you, Rebecca. We asked about law school application. We talked about your grades, your job. We talked about the curriculum. Leaving school. Leaving school, we talked about leaving school because basically, you're saying that to secure your job while you're in school. You can, yeah, but don't worry about it if you don't secure it because I didn't secure it and I ended up getting something. And not even through the school, but use your school as a resource because your school is hard pressed to make sure they can count you in the number when saying, hey, look at all of the, the students that got placed. Use them as a resource. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca, for your time. I appreciate you. You? Are you gonna come back on here? Robert said he wanted to come on here. Oh yeah. yes. Listen, you need to get into his life story because that's actually really interesting for his all of his little twenty one years. Oh that's cute. Yeah, he's done a lot. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, but I'll come back. Thank you guys for joining me today and we're gonna have more videos like this coming up soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you never miss when I post a new video. Also, I do want to mention that I do have a second here on my channel called A Writer's Scope, where you send to my email whatever advice you need, whatever problems you're going through. If you have anything related to law, I can always bring her back on here and we can answer whatever problems that you need. Not legal advice specifically, but you know, just what general advice for anything that you're going through. If you need help, you know, talking about the LSAT or talking about getting into law school, how to alleviate your stress. So with that being said, do you guys want to take No. Okay. Thank you guys and I'll see you.